when I was in 10th grade, uh, our English teacher gave us an assignment to do a project on communications. It was wide open. You could write a paper. You could perform a play or sing a song. Anyway, so when I told my parents about it over dinner, my mom said, well, why don't you and Nina, Nina's my older sister, why don't you guys make up your own mime alphabet book? Which was, um, it was fine, it was not an altogether original idea. Marcel Marceau had just come out with the mime alphabet book, but hey, template. Um, <laughs> my, and my sister had been taking photography classes through the Minneapolis Urban Arts Program for a bit, and I had just started taking mime and dance classes. So it was actually a really brilliant idea, except for the part that um, Nina and I hadn't really like agreed on anything. Um, since, since I was probably 10 when we disbanded our man from Uncle Club. So I was now 15, she was 17, but she was game. She wanted to do a project and I didn't want to write a paper. So we sat down and made a list of, um, well, I mean the 26 letters, you know, were given, but we, we <laughs> made up words that went with each of them and like shockingly agreed on nearly every one of them. And um, probably because we both came from the same unkst ridden home. So D like was for dying, um, <laughs> fear, F was for fear, G was for guilty, um, <laughs> S was for spy, T was for trapped, V was for vicious, X was for xenophobia, which was Nina's idea. Um, <laughs> But anyway, we were like totally in sync on this. So uh, we went down to the basement, a couple days later put a sheet down on the basement floor and I had my black leotard and tights on, I put on some ma my makeup and then against this pink stucco wall, uh, Nina took pictures while I did these poses. And then um, the following weekend, uh, we spent two magical days in this dark room. She had gotten a key to the place where they were taking classes. And f for two days, I mean, it was, she would develop the film and we would, we would watch things kind of come to life and then, and then we would develop pictures and then the baths and these photos would just appear on these squares of paper. So after they were dried, um, then we spent some more time spraying, sorry, <laughs> spray mounting them on poster board and then cutting with an X-Acto knife and then taking the 26 letters plus um, the covers and duct tape, we duct tape them together. So it was, it was, it was a tome, and I turned it into my English class, and I, I got an A. I don't want to brag, but, but then um, one of the girls in my class, Robin, asked if she could borrow the book to show it to her next door neighbor, who happened to own his own children's literature publishing company. So she brought the book, the Mime Alphabet book, to him, and then a couple of months later, we got a phone call that Learner Publications wanted to publish our book, and they were... Um, they were willing to offer us a flat fee of $300, no royalties, which um, at the time seemed impressive um, compared to what I was making babysitting. And plus, just I'm going to just say it as an aside, it was a terrible book and nobody else would publish it. But I didn't really realize that at the time, but I just had a sense that um, this was not negotiable. Anyway, but they had a couple of, um, a couple of requests. Uh, we had to change a couple of the letters. Um, C was for cannabis, which this being, you know, 1971. And, um, and E was for Eve, where I was like clutching my pubes and my breasts and looking away from the camera in shame. Um, oh yeah, wait, we also had to change R for rapier, either because it was French or it sounded like um, a very bad word. So that became rescue, but again, I'm, my brow was furrowed and it was not a happy rescue. So thematically, the book still really hung together. Um, anyway, then crickets until uh, a year and a half later. And then the book was published um, and there was no book signing or mime promotional events. It was just sort of a, here's the book. And they gave us some copies, which we gave to people like party favors. Um, but then, about six months later, we found out it had been reviewed by the New York Times. <laughs> and 
the reviewer said something to the effect of, um, I paraphrase only a little bit, it takes a lot of chutzpah for two such talentless girls <laughs> to publish their own book. <laughs> Anyway, Nina and I moved on and um, kind of went our separate ways, although we, we actually got along really well over the years. She's now like one of my favorite humans on the planet. And just a couple of years ago, um, we started trading back and forth through email uh, links to websites that mention the book. There's like this, it's like a, it's, it's not like a cult following, it's like a cult hating or something <laughs> like like what the this this is these are I don't know who these girls are but they are sick there's something <laughs> sick about them um, another one is like whoa freak worst book ever it's also listed on awfullibrarybooks.com and um, awful book covers and my favorite, weirdbooks.com, we are listed on the top 10 right below stray grocery carts in Eastern North America. <laughs> Thank you.